Sun, Sun. Only at the entry gates to the toll gate the sun came out on Grossglockner Hochalpenstrasse and allowed us to take off the raincoats we had been bravely wearing since the morning. So we changed clothes and headed towards the highest peak in Austria, Grossglockner. Grossglockner Hochalpenstrasse. Toll road is open from May to November, every day from 5 hours a.m. to 10 hours p.m and it is the highest asphalt road in Austria. It was built for military and commercial reasons to connect southern regions of Austria, East Tyrol, and Carinthia with the northern part of the country. The outbreak of the Great Crisis in 1929 and enormous unemployment in Austria and the related need to undertake large public works resulted in August 1930. Work began on construction of Grossglockner Hochalpenstrasse. The work was completed in 1935 and the much-awaited connection took place regions of Austria also turned out to be a tourist hit at that time. Until of World War II, this road was visited annually by almost 375,000 tourists, which was more than three times higher than the first estimates. Grossglockner Hochalpenstrasse is 48 km long. It has 36 serpentines and at the highest point at 2,504 m above sea level. The clouds hung over our heads all the way to Gross, effectively blocking most of the alpine views. We visited, unfortunately without enthusiasm, several roadside viewpoints. We tried not to get f don't fall on part of our road. Because the driveway on Edelweisspitze, it is paved with extremely slippery wet paving stones. We hoped for gaps between the clouds. We again wear motorcycle rubber just before Grossglockner. Okay, we're in. It was raining a bit, but we made it. We parked at Kaiser Franz Josef's Höhe with a completely no view of the Grossglockner that day. We checked at the stores to see if there were any original refrigerator magnets and other souvenirs from the trip. Then we complained collectively and individually for the lack of views, for the weather, rain, and other dark forces, which ruined our way to Grossglockner. Unfortunately for us, the clouds lowered, and we spent the rest of that day in motorcycle rubbers, driving south with the rain. The next day, looking at the weather radar, I made an unpleasant decision. We detoured the Dolomites from the north because of the storm. Fortunately, the northern detour of the Dolomites under Plan de Corones turned out to be a good decision, and we reached Bressignon with dry clothes. We saved several hours this way, so we went a bit further onto the side roads, and we enjoyed the curves, fewer cars, and the passing motorcycles confirmed our belief that that we chose good motorcycle roads right up to Bolsano. We managed to get ourselves off our backs, rain tires, and we started to enjoy the ride with quite good views of the mountain slopes. We passed a few vineyards, a few sleepy towns, a whole lot of farms, and we traveled in the sun, dry, next kilometers of our journey. We arrived in Trento just after noon, and there we started the ascent, great turns uphill to Monte Bondon. I had the pleasure of being there two years ago, so I bravely and quickly led my friends to the mentioned peak and right behind it, we sat down at a table at the viewpoint for a delicious coffee. Sipping coffee under the apple tree This gentle man Oh, you're a good man Quite the best man A real fine man Ahead of us was the descent from the foothills of the Dolomites Brenta and access to Arco, where we planned to find a campsite. No way. All campsites in Arco and Nago Torboli were filled up to max, and we were refused accommodation. 
We took out our smartphones and found it quickly some low-budget hotel nearby on our further road, on Lake Garda. But before we get to the hotel, we have one more place to visit. Driving along the western, wilder shore of Lake Garda, we can admire the views from the lake level for a moment, before we enter Strada della Fora, the road of James Bonds from the Quantum of Solace movie. Because Strada della Fora is an iconic road, a few words about the history of its creation. Well, Strada della Fora, also known as the Porto Pievevesio Road, was designed by a self-taught engineer without a diploma. This gentleman was Arturo Cozzaglio from Tremosi, who has spent years researching the gorge in which the current road runs, only slightly different from Arthur's original plan. This road crosses a gorge carved out by the Brasa stream, and she was supposed to help Arthur get to his research points. At the end of this beautiful and scenic road, there is a town called Pievo, and in it, Hotel Paradiso, where you can have a drink delicious Italian coffee from the hotel terrace, you will be able to admire a beautiful view of Lake Garda. Who is afraid of entering this beautiful road? There is nothing to be afraid of. For sure. The road is completely cool even for those who are not familiar with mountain roads and the view from the mentioned terrace. You see. Let's go back over a delicious coffee to the description of the Strada della Fora road. In many places, especially in passages through ancient caves, you can see how interference in nature with human hands to build this road. This is especially visible in the current riverbed, its width and direction, which does not seem completely obvious in a few places. This road is a real work of art and certainly very amazing for its times in which it was created, i.e. in 1913. Stories of this path go back to people such as Winston Churchill, who, as Minister of the Interior or as Chancellor before World War II, was on a visit to Italy. He had the pleasure of driving this route. Then he reportedly called it the eighth wonder of the world to the Italian press. However, to make things less different, I will mention that Winston Churchill was a strong opponent of women's voting rights and even ordered the police to use brutal methods against suffragettes. We Poles know such methods of police behavior towards women. Oh yes, we know. Warning. Strada della Fora from April 1 to November 12, between 9 at a.m. and 7 and p.m., works only up direction, from 7 to 9 I and at night. From 7 and p.m. to 7 and a.m. is open in both directions with alternating traffic. From November 13 to March 31, you can ride up and down 24 hours a day. This is the end of our adventure with Italian views. In a moment, we will arrive for the night, and the next day, we will enter France, and we will meet again on the Route de Grande Alpes.